Welcome to T-Bone Speaks with Dr. Tarun Agarwal, where our goal is to change the way you practice dentistry by helping you achieve clinical, financial, and personal balance. Now, here's your host, T-Bone. Welcome everybody to another week of the T-Bone Speaks podcast. <laughs> For some reason, it, it went to Meredith, <laughs> but we'll go with it. But uh, I hope everybody's having a great week and you're driving safely or exercising safely and we've is got that a safe thing to do exercise safely yes <laughs> i mean i think exercise is not safe <laughs> that's what i was thinking you would think it <laughs> but i've been doing a little bit more mm -hmm. exercise since my uh, diabetes test has mm -hmm. shown me that i'm uh, way out of control Keeping up with T-Bone. This is like keeping up with the Kardashians. Keeping up with T-Bone. Why have we never done that before? Because it, This could be a segment. Nobody would be interested. Yes, they would. Nobody's interested. Yeah, new segment. Well, anyway, this week we're going to be talking about Dentistry Flywheel, and we have a phenomenal guest on. But before we get to this week's episode, let me turn it over to Meredith, and she's going to do our sales pitch for us this week. Hi, everyone. Before we get into that, I have a review... Well, I had a review. Yes, I have a review um, of the podcast. This is from DMD. So we're going to go with anonymous doctor. <laughs> Thank you. Five stars. Five stars. Thank you for putting this on. I have learned a ton from your podcast, blog, and guest appearances on other podcasts. Can't wait to get out to Raleigh for one of your seminars. Perfect. So we hope to- My kids want you to come quickly. Yes. We would like for you to join us in Raleigh for one of our retreat experiences. Wouldn't even just and say a seminar anymore. This recent retreat experience was probably one of the best and most tiring experiences we've had. T-Bone shut down the party. <laughs> I did have food. I told you, I did tell your children that you're practicing well with us. Well, when I, <laughs> for them. When I walked in at about 1040 and there was a rave going on. <laughs> I figured I had glow sticks in my car. That it was time. They were orange. We were on brand. Time to turn it off. All right. Off. All right, fine. Well, before we get started, I would like to add or mention that we have added a few new courses uh, before the end of the year. So we have a 3D printing in Nashville, October 15th and 16th. We have an all on X digital course, October 28th and 29th. And because we had such a great time, we have added a Digital Implant Continuum Express November 16th through the 21st. So our fall um, implant continuum is sold out. If you're interested in this one that was just added, you can contact me at 855-332-2285. Well, with all that being said, that's phenomenal. I want to introduce our guest this week. It, his name is Farai Kufakwedu. And Farai, how are you doing, sir? I am doing fantastic. I'm doing great. Calgary is hot. What is hot for me? Really? Like 70? Yeah, uh, okay, here yeah, we're dealing with degree C, so uh, we have to do the conversion, but They're it's intensive. like a 35 degree C. Oh, that's pretty warm. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it is warm. It is warm. This this week is probably going to be the week, the, the, the hottest. In oh, that's like 95. Year, that's yeah. the same as it was here today. Yeah. Yeah, that's why we don't want to live in Canada. It's hot there. No, it's cold there. Oh, no, it's, apparently it's hot. <laughs> I know, but it's hot and cold. Yeah, it is. It is It is both ways. It, it's, it swings like these drastic swings, but but it is It is an amazing day. I'm, uh, I'm excited and I'm looking forward to this. Yeah, you know, for I, uh, I met you on Clubhouse one day. Uh, my wife made, made us open a audio channel. Oh yeah! And you popped in, and uh, and you know, I we started talking about your flywheel effect, and how you've con uh, kind of worked that into dentistry, and I found it quite fascinating. So I wanted to bring you on the podcast and talk about uh, the flywheel effect in dentistry. So what inspired you, and what is the flywheel effect as it relates to dentistry? All right, that's that's a fantastic question, uh, Tarun. But before I go there into answering that question, I think it would be very it would be great for your for your audience to 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 know the man because mm -hmm. as you know very well, uh, people buy buy from people, uh, people buy from people they know, like and trust. So if you don't mind, I just um, uh, bring in just a background uh, my background story. Uh, what led me to where I am and what led me to 
dentistry flywheel. We'd so love for okay. you. We'd love yes. to put the focus on you and have you talk to us about that. All right, great. So, so Farai Kufakwedu, that name is Shona. That's Shona is one of the two major languages in Zimbabwe, Southern Africa. So that's where I came, uh, born and bred, came to Canada in 2001, escaped the night of uh, torture. I literally uh, escaped Zimbabwe with my life uh, and settled in Canada in 2001. Uh, I went into chemical engineering, first generation. I knew nobody when I came here, uh, just 200 bucks in my pocket. I led it in Toronto, a few years down the line, studied chemical engineering. But I've always been uh, an entrepreneur at heart, even from, from a very young age. Uh, the entrepreneurial spirit has always been burning and crying within me. So uh, in the third year of my chemical engineering studies, I decided to go out and start a business because that has always been my long life dream when I come here. So I started a concierge, a concierge and security services business in Toronto. Uh, that was in 2009. By 2013, that company had grown to a good seven figures and I transformed the company into a luxury concierge and security services brand that was serving the top, top tier of high rise residential buildings in Toronto. Ended up exiting that business. When I exited that business, I was searching for another business to, to get into and i found a huge gaping opportunity to really help dentists help more people and this is how this came about i was it was at the end of uh 2018 2009 uh, 2018 thereabouts we were looking at how much of our dental benefits we had used that year my wife and i for a family of five we had about seventeen thousand five hundred dollars in our benefits uh, to go to the dentist for dental care. We found that we had only utilized about 4,000. So I'm saying to myself, okay, I had 17.5 grand and I only used four grand. Why is that? Because it, it looks like I have lost in terms of dental care that my family and I could have received. And the dentist is also lost in the money that should have come gone to them. So as I continue digging, I found huge gaps um, for growth, for practices to get to get to really help a lot more people. Because for me, I felt that my dentist had let me down by not doing what she was supposed to do to get me into her chair. Long story short, I found a dentistry flywheel. So Dentistry flywheels, the fly, do you, how much do you know, t, um, Tarun, how much do you know about the flywheel effect? Not, not too much. I mean, I would argue that uh, most of our listeners also probably haven't heard much. So why don't you fill us, on, fill us in on the flywheel effect? All right, perfect. Okay, so what's a flywheel? Basically, a flywheel is a framework that takes all the major elements that you need to grow your practice and arranges all those individual elements into a sequence, into a logical sequence. The goal being to maximize the effectiveness of everything that you do. Okay, so let's look at a very rudimentary flywheel example, a flywheel that has got three components. And a flywheel basically is just an energy storage device. The more you rotate it, the more it rotates, the more momentum it gains. And for a dental practice, the faster your flywheel rotates, the more momentum your flywheel gains, the more profitable you become. So in a flywheel with three components, component A, component B, component C, you identify what is the most important thing to start with, component A, such that if you do that thing, component A, you can't help it but get to component B. And if you do component B, you can't help it but get to component C. And if you execute on component C, you can't help it but get back to component A and the flywheel keeps rotating. Now, let's go to the Amazon story. 2001, Jeff Bezos uh, and everybody else on Silicon Valley was staring death in the face as the dot-com bubble uh, um, exploded, right? You know about this. Right, We yes. What took Jeff Bezos and his team to where they are today 
is them hiring Jim Collins. Jeff Bezos and this team actually hired Jim Collins and Jim Collins told them about the flyway effect. So Amazon's flyway was designed so that the first piece was to lower prices. And what happens when you lower prices? You can't help it but get more customers to the Amazon store. And what happens when you get more uh, customers to the Amazon store? It means now you need more supplies. Enter third party sellers. So more customers Amazon got, the more third party sellers it invited onto their platform. And the more third party sellers came onto the Amazon platform, the greater Amazon expanded its distribution. And the greater they expanded their distribution, the greater economies of scale they get, they got. And you know what happens when you get huge economies of uh, economies of scale? Your price is lower down. That begins the flywheel, right? And the flywheel keeps growing. Now, let's apply that flywheel concept to dentistry. Yeah, we can uh, yep. hit that, that the first blue circle there. Yes. Okay. So your flywheel concept as a dental practice needs a foundation. As you're going to see very soon, there are nine components to your dentistry flywheel. And the base foundation that is needed to sustain your growth and to make sure that your growth is systematized is you need to have systems and marketing automation in place. T-Bone, I've, uh, I've heard you have conversations on this, on this podcast with some great marketing automation systems. Revenue well is a case in, uh, is a case in point. Practice by numbers is a case in point. These are automation platforms that you need to run under your flywheel so that everything else you do is going to be attached to, the, to those systems and automation platforms. Now, once, so the question I would ask the audience is, how many of you guys have a marketing automation in place in addition to your practice management software? Yeah, we're not talking of your, uh, of your peer. We're not talking of the Open Dental or the Dentrixes, no. We're talking of a marketing automation system that is critical to grow and sustain that growth in today's age. Now, once you have your systems and marketing automation in place, the first thing that we need on that flywheel is your awesome practice culture. You know that um, there is nothing that you can do at Raleigh Dental Arts that is going to give you the maximum success if your practice culture is crappy and toxic. You agree with me, right? Absolutely. Oh, yes. You've got to have a great culture. And the practice culture. Uh, have you read, um, what's his name, uh, Gary Keller's book, The One Thing? I have not read that one. I'll have to put it on my list of books. Put it read. on your list, please. Put it the on one your list, thing. please. Because, yeah, The One Thing by Gary Keller, the real estate mogul. Keller okay. Williams. Okay. So Gary asks this question to business owners, practice owners like you. What is the one thing that if you do it effectively, everything else will become easier or altogether unnecessary. And for dentists, I would ask, what is the one thing that you could do in your practice that would make everything else easier or more effective? For me, it's the practice culture. Because if the practice culture is dialed in, then everything else becomes very easy. So before anything else, if I were speaking to a client, the first thing I would ask is, on a scale of one to 10, how awesome is your practice culture? One being dreadfully awful and 10 being awesome. Where do you see yourself? Wherever they put themselves, we start working from there. Now, once we have the practice culture momentum driver in place, the next momentum driver we, we need to put in place is your nine-star patient experience. And I had a lot of questions on this nine-star patient experience because I've heard Let's of five-star, seven-star, you know, in Dubai, now we have... A nine star patient experience. So, can you can you help break that down? What is the nine star patient experience? All right. So, like you have said, if you were to fly to Dubai first class on um, on on the Emirates flight first class, that's five star experience. If you were to go to a Ritz Carlton, that's five star experience. Now, if you were to take four more rings and put it on top of that five star that means you are going 
way over and beyond what is expected of you as a dental practice. So let me give you an example that if you were to do this, this would really draw everybody out of their comfort zone. So say, for example, you have, an, uh, you have a full arch uh, patient, uh, Tarun, who is paid, say, 35 grand. Right. Who is going to pay 35, 30, 35 grand for a procedure. What would happen if you and your team were to send a limo to your house to pick it up in the morning, pick it up, you have camera people, you have videographers shooting everything with their consent, of course, with, their, with the patient's consent, of course, shooting it like a real movie scene. You roll out the red carpet, they get into the, they get into the limo, they are treated to an absolutely wild experience in the limo, they get to the practice, the carpet is rolled out, they get in, they are welcomed in, they are checked in, and they come in to get their um, treatment done. After the treatment is done, your team has delivered the most awesome experience they can to the patient. The patient comes out, gets into the limo, and go home. How many people have you had, how many dental practices have you had who have done that? You know, I remember there was a guy in Alaska that used to have a limousine uh, that picked up his patients, but that was probably 20 years ago. Uh, I've, I've, uh, I don't know what would happen if I sent a limousine to pick up. What do you think would happen, Meredith? In a small town, maybe I could see how you would do that. But I mean, we have patients coming flying in. Yeah, <laughs> you gonna send a private jet for them? Maybe, too? maybe we can. We can yeah. raise that for <laughs> private jet. No, but I, I see your point. It makes a tremendous uh, impact on the patient, and more than likely, they're going to tell others, and others are going to see them doing all of these things makes you stand out for sure it's something no one else is doing absolutely 100 percent. things like that things like getting to know my child's name when i come in for my own treatment and being me being um, the dentist or the hygienist or the assistant inquiring about the health of my son or my daughter who is home that what that is going to tell me is these people don't just care about me alone. They care about my family. And you know, Tarun, what happens when you do that? You cease to become a dentist, but you transform yourself into a family friend. And when a dentist becomes a family friend, the chances of people not showing up for their appointments drop down to zero. And Meredith, what do you think is going to happen to your case, to your case acceptance? when you are considered a member of the family or a, fa a family friend. They trust you and they're coming to you first. You're not having to chase them down. 100%. Yeah. So doing those things that are over and above what's expected of you, that's what constitutes the nine-star patient experience. Uh, one of the problems that, I, that I've seen with a lot of practices is they don't know what to do. Every practice would say, if you ask them, would you like to deliver an outstanding patient experience? Everybody would say, absolutely, we want, to, we want to do that. But people don't have a playbook, so to speak, from which to pick and choose those plays that will constitute their awesome patient experience, which is why I wrote this book, The Nine Star Patient Experience Moments of Magic Playbook for enchanting your dental patients into raving fans that pay more, refer a lot more, and stay with you for a lifetime, even after a pandemic. So this is a playbook with 70, 74, 75 uh, plays that practices can take right away and start deploying. That's awesome. Where can, right. people, can people buy this on Amazon? Where can people get this book? It is on book? Amazon. People okay. can buy this on Amazon, or they can get on our website, www.9spe for nine star patient experience www.9spe.com if okay. somebody gets the book from there they will just pay for the shipping and i'll send the book to them free of charge oh, wow. oh okay well yeah. okay so if, if again if you want if you want to learn more about the book all you got to do is go to 9spe.com and pay shipping and handling and you get the book for free you know, We're definitely going to do that. Yeah, absolutely. So, all right, all right. So now we've talked about the nine-star patient experience. Uh, you know, developing an awesome culture. 
Um, what's what's next in your uh, flywheel here? Reputation. Reputation management. Uh, and when you are working on your reputation marketing, you are you are aiming at two audiences. The first audience you want to please with your reputation marketing are the Google gods, the gods of search. So you are looking at the consistency of uh, reputation acquisition. You're looking at the quality of the reputation of the reviews that are coming in. And you're looking at the overall number of the reviews that are coming in. You're also looking at your Google My Business profile. How optimized is your Google My Business profile? All that part of your reputation marketing is to please the Google gods so that when people come on Google and they are searching, you come up top of search, you are visible. The next, the second group of, the second target that you're aiming with your reputation market are your patients. Uh, are your patients, right? Because uh, now it's no longer, it is, there is a lot of word, word of mouth, there is power in word of mouth, but it's more word of thumb, like um, word of thumb, because now people are saying what they feel with their, thumb, with their, with their thumbs, the reviews online. We want to make sure that, so um, how, how, how long have you guys been um, been operational at uh, Raleigh Dental Arts? How many years? Uh, we, I started the practice in 2001. 2001. So, 20, a little over 20 years. A little over 20 years. And right now you are at 401 reviews. Oh, that's pretty good. I haven't checked in a while. Yeah. Now, so, uh, ballpark figure, guesstimate, your best guesstimate. How many, how many people's lives do you think you have transformed in those 20 years? Like how many different patients have we seen? Yeah, yeah. Uh, probably 15,000, I guess. 15K, 15K at least, okay. So would you honestly say that given the awesome work that you and your team are doing, would you honestly that would you honestly say that just 401 reviews are an accurate reflection of what you've done? No, not that at number, all. I don't think so. Not at all, right? This, the actual story of the awesome work you have, not, you have done is not reflected in the number of reviews you have. So you want to jack up that reviews for you. For, I've, um, I've been following you for quite, for quite some time, uh, Tibon, and you, are, you and your team, you are well-liked. You do a fantastic job. By 12 months' time, these reviews should have tripled. Very easy. Now... Uh, tell me how do, how do I get to twelve? Tell me how I get to twelve hundred reviews. How many how many reviews are you getting in a day? So we, we, so we'll say okay. How many reviews are you getting in a day? I don't even we think need to we get we one need, a day. We need, that, we need that number. We need the number of reviews you are getting in a day, and we need to set a target. Say okay. How many reviews do you want? Given the number of people that you're seeing, you are not you are not doing. <laughs> you guys are doing a really good job. I have read I have read some of your reviews. You are doing a really good job. Chances are nine and a half out of ten patients coming out of your out of your practice is something great to say. So why are we not getting these people to write it down? That's a great question. I don't know. That's, I can't give you a reason. That's, that's 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 one of the that's what we need to figure out and nail down on the reputation marketing piece. That is a critical piece because the job you are doing is not reflected in the number of reviews we have. We need to have those two matching up and that will do amazing things for your ranking, for your Google, for your ranking on Google, on Bing and on Yahoo. All right. That's your reputation marketing piece. So are you using, are you using any reputation marketing, reputation management software right now? I mean, we just have revenue well, so that's. Uh, that's what we're using. So I don't, does it, do, I'm sure it does reviews, but mainly we've been just asking for Google reviews. You can prompt it to set it up to send at the end of every day. You could set it up to send all the patients we saw that day could get an email that says, leave us a review. Maybe we should turn that like back. Like an auto prompt. Okay. 
Yeah. But we're so typically we texting want, patients that we liked or thought had a great experience and everybody's choosing one a day and texting them directly the link. Okay. And the link gets them straight to Google. Yes. No hopes to jump. Okay. So the, the best thing would be to say, okay, to put them through a filter system. Somebody, how was your experience? If their experience was less than stellar, they are taken through a different route that gets them to talk to you and not talk to Google. If they feel they had a fabulous experience, they are taken to another route that takes them straight to Google. And that is done on a daily basis consistently. Consistency is key. That's the reputation marketing piece. So you need a good reputation marketing system that's really on the ball every day. The moment somebody, the moment a patient checks in two hours later, two, hour, two and a half hours later, a text message is going. Hmm. We have to look into that. See yeah, there's better that. I texted you guys, I think I texted the two of you a system. I know someone in the May sleep course told me about where you can, everyone leaves a review kind of to a third party and if it's good, it automatically gets posted to Google. Oh, yeah, I don't know about all these things. Yeah, it sounds and it's automated as well. I think that's what you're yeah, talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that can be automated and that makes it very easy because at the end of the day, what you want is to make it dump proof and super easy for people <laughs> to leave you these reviews. All right, so let's get to the next momentum driver after reputation marketing which is our digital real estate assets. 3D dentist, the retreat. You, you guys bought that, right? You, you, you paid money for that. Yes, we paid. Unfortunately, we paid a lot of money for that. <laughs> you, right? To, to be um, on vacation. That's an, that's an asset, isn't it? It is. It is an asset. Absolutely. That, that, that is an asset. So you know that if you invest in real estate, your assets are going to gradually appreciate over time. That's a, your, your real estate portfolio. Now, in the digital age, you also need a portfolio of digital real estate assets. You are not just building a website alone. A website alone, that is not going to, that is not going to take you, it's not going to take you far. You need a well-optimized website that's optimized for visibility and conversion. You are going to need landing pages for all your individual major cases, uh, major treatments, the slip, you need a landing page for your slip dentistry, you need a landing page for your implants dentistry, you need a landing page for your ortho dentistry. It's individual landing pages, that's part of your real estate assets. You are going to need video as part of your digital uh, real estate portfolio. You know that uh, one, 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 one of the major cries that I hear a lot of dentists make is they are not good on camera. Uh, they, are, they, they suck on camera and uh, the video is just, it's, 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 uh, it's daunting for a lot of people. Uh, Tibon, you have seen the videos, uh, my videos, right? I have. They, you, you do a nice job. Thank you. Thank you. But I'll tell you that, oh man, I suck at video. I, oh my God. For the longest time. I, I don't believe that. Video. <laughs> Thank you. <That's> <laughs> but you see, that's because I don't rely on myself. I rely on tools to do these videos. I build, I've got a database of scripts for dentists and I've got a database of scripts for myself. And those scripts, I simply put them into an app. You can write that down called Big View TV. It's, uh, it works on iOS and Android. You put your, you write, you put the script in, then you look at the phone, you read the script, and voila, there you go. So all the videos I've done, all those are scripted videos. Okay. None of them is free. So that helps dentists build that real estate uh, portfolio. The other thing that I see, uh, the other huge mistake that I see a lot of dentists make is not investing in photography. Now, what do you right? mean by that? Uh, uh, be more specific with us on the photography. What kind of photography does a dental practice need? You need, you need authentic photos. You need photos of Michelle herself as your business manager. You need photos of yourself as the dentist. You need individual team members' photos, team members' um, team photos, and you need patient photos. 
as compared, as opposed to, to having stock photography that people get on Canva, on Shutterstock, or any one of those um, free um, paid photo uh, platforms. That's the main difference. And would you take these photos in the office, outside of the office? Would you hang them on the wall? Would you be using them for social media or all of the above? No, all of the above, really. All of the above because the more authentic the photos are, the, the more, because what you want is to emotionally connect with people online. When people visit your website, you want them to know you, trust you, and know you, like you, and trust you. And people are not going to know, like, and trust you based on the photo of, like, a souped up, fine-tuned photo of some model in uh, Spain. That's not going to happen. Photos of you that are well done, high-quality photos of the team are needed on the website. High-quality videos of the dentist, of the team, are needed on the website as well. That's part of your digital real estate asset portfolio. So if you were going to start building a, uh, a real estate empire today, Tarun, would you just go out and start buying houses? Probably or not. You'd, Probably. You'd find, find a specialist. My wife right? might. <laughs> your wife might? No. Yeah, she She's might. the smart one. She, that's what I'm saying. She <laughs> might go buy it. I mean, I'm, 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 too, I'm too lazy to do some of those things. Yeah, but you see... If you are doing something that you are, you are not an expert in, you look for an expert to help you do it, right? So if you are going to get into real estate, real estate you want to build an asset, uh, an asset base, you look for a real estate broker, an agent who knows that. The same applies to your digital real estate asset portfolio as a dental practice. You need to partner with somebody who is going to build the strategy for you to build those real, uh, those digital assets for you now you can deploy those on your website on your landing pages um or in your email and all the other marketing collateral that you're going to deploy them that's your digital real estate uh, asset portfolio the next momentum driver is our marketing funnels right uh you mentioned that uh we are consistent in doing our uh, in doing our seo and all that but do we need marketing funnels Marketing funnels involve your advertising on social media, that's Google, Bing, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. Your advertising, that's part of your, part of your asset. Your advertising is right at the top of your funnel. Then you are going to need landing pages. Ten, nine out of ten times, you see a Google ad on your feed. If you click that Google ad, that Google ad is going to take you to a dental practices website with all the with all the menu links up above and everything else everywhere, right? But the website homepage is not designed to convert. What you need is somebody clicks your web your, your your ad, they are taken to a crafted landing page that's crafted to convert people into bats sitting in your treatment box. To do that, you are going to need videos. You are going to need excellent copywriting. That is the reason why I have Dan Kennedy behind me there. The no, no BS king. Yeah. Copywriting. You need excellent copywriting in your funnels. Uh, and Tibor, do you know one of the one of the biggest things? <laughs> that I'm seeing right now, when you put up a website, what do you want people to do? You want people to read that website, right? To read the copy on your website, right? And yeah, you want to read, read it and make a phone call and make an appointment. Absolutely. But that is not going to happen if people don't like you or trust you. And people are not going to like you and trust you if what's written on your website is hard to read. Okay, I have an app called the Hemingway app. You can write that down, Hemingway, Hemingway editor. You use the Hemingway editor to find out how readable your website copy is. This is gold, guys. This is gold, and you need to take this like gold. 
Because if the copy on your website is hard to read, what do you want people to do? They are not, they are not going to come there. They're not going to be clicking that call, um, that book an appointment now button. They are not going to click that schedule an appointment button. No, they're just going to get out of there confused. And that's the last thing you want. Just go on your website, copy a swath of text, paste it into the Hemingway editor and see how well you do. You will see that how many sentences do you have that are hard to read and how many sentences do you have that are very hard to read and to make your decision from there because you want your copy to appeal to people and you want copy that's easy to read. Absolutely. That's marketing practice. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. And, you know, I think the next step on these marketing funnels is to drive patients to the practice uh, and, and then help increase case acceptance uh, through some of the marketing because you, you create reputation management, you help set yourself up as an expert, you're driving people to your office so they already know you, like you, they already have an idea of what you're doing. So I believe the next step on the flywheel is uh, improving case acceptance. So talk to us about that. Excellent. So your marketing funnels, your advertising, your landing pages are driving people into the practice. They're making phone calls. When the phone call comes in, Tyrone, is the lady or gentleman at the front desk trained to convert that phone call into a booking? That's the, that's the first part of case acceptance. Actually, case acceptance, it starts, it starts way before the call comes in. It starts on the website. So if our digital real estate assets are optimized for conversion, hopefully by the time they make that call, they already know you enough and they already like you a little bit and they trust you quite a lot. That part of case acceptance is critical before they call. Now, when they call, the front desk team, what training has the front desk team received in sales? I think from what Not we've seen, I think from what we've seen is a lot of people leave the front desk out when it comes to case acceptance because they're so busy training the people who see the patients and plan the treatment with them, but they're losing patients before they even get in the door because they're not training the front office. Yeah, we experienced that a couple of years ago when I mm -hmm. spent a lot of money on Google and the people answering the phone weren't doing a very good job. Actually, they're doing a pretty, pretty piss poor job and uh, it cost me a lot of money. 100%. That's why uh, for me, for, for our clients, we don't take up a client if a client is not willing to have court tracking in place. Because otherwise, how are you going to optimize? How are you going to, how are you going to, how are you going to improve? right right absolutely so, the front desk has to be trained in sales they have to be trained in marketing the next piece now is the treatment coordinator <laughs> what training has the treatment coordinator received in sales because this is a sales job now if um if the treatment coordinator is of the mentality that uh, mrs brown who needs a full set of upper teeth wants the full set of upper teeth because she wants to chew in a she wants to chew an apple i don't think mrs brown is going to pay fifteen fifteen thousand dollars to for the ability to chew an apple do you no no absolutely not there is definitely a deeper underlying reason so these deep underlying reasons do our treatment coordinators have they received the necessary training? So what I've done for my agency is I've partnered with um, with uh, a lady by the by the name of Sherin Washington. Sherin has sold over twenty five million dollars in uh, in implants when she was working for Clear Choice. So you need a training partner for your treatment coordinators this cannot be overstated this is critical because it doesn't matter if Farai and this marketing uh, wizardry brings in as many phone calls into your office and all these people come in highly qualified uh, others are seeking others are price shoppers others are seeking second opinions 
and the, and the team is not able to convert them, then it's a really waste of money, like you just said, right? Yeah, absolutely, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's the case. That's the case acceptance piece. The next piece uh, of the flywheel, all right, is our reappointment system. Basically, our reappointment system is our reactivation system. How many patients in our, how many active patients in our database haven't come into the office in the last 12 months, in the last 18 months? What system do we have in place to automatically reach out to them consistently so that the moment a person reaches the 12th month without having come in immediately, an email is shot out, a text message is shot out, a reminder is sent to the front desk team to reach out to that, um, to that patient. That's your, that's your reappointment system. After your reappointment system, the next piece of the flywheel is your referral system, your referral, your referrals engine. Long gone are the days when people referred out of the goodness of their hearts. People do refer out of the goodness of their hearts, but that is not the strategy dentists that are hungry for growth employ. Dentists that are hungry for growth, they are proactive. They put in place a system to proactively go out and seek for referrals. You know, for I, I, I found that um, maybe it's just my own experience, uh, that people are very hesitant to ask patients for referrals or team members are hesitant to ask patients for referrals. Do you have any suggestions on what people can do to make that easier or to encourage more referrals from patients? <laughs> Absolutely. So the first thing that we need to do, uh, Tarun, is to set, to have a culture, a referrals culture in the practice. So the, lead, the leader of the practice has to sit with his or her team and set the expectation for referrals. And many people, like you are saying, you are correctly pointing out that a lot of people are hesitant to ask for referrals. But if you do it first time, you do it second time, you do it third time, it grows into you. And it becomes easier when, when you really don't have a choice. Because we are running a business here, right? This is not, uh, this is not, this is not, um, we are not playing hooky. We are building a business, a business that you, your wife and your family and your team members are relying on for their income. And you are relying in, you are relying on this business for your, for your retirement. We are correct. I'm correct in assuming this, right? Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so if I am sitting down with a member of the team, it's an uncomfortable discussion. Look, we need you to bring, to get patients to refer. If you have to go look for a book, if you have to listen to a podcast to teach yourself to ask for referrals the proper way, do what you have to do. At the end of the day, the expectation has to be set with the team. That's number one. Number two, the expectation is also to be set with the patients that we are a referrals generating practice you are one of our most amazing patients and it would be a really really great thing if we were to get more people like you the patients have to know that they too have got an expectation to bring in referrals now you are going to want to have queues around the office to reinforce that, re that um, couch of referrals. Lepo pins, um, posters on the wall, gifts, different types, different types of um, cues that you can put around the office to promote that couch of referrals. And finally, the last piece, the last piece on the on the flywheel is your market, um, your market domination, your community dominance. Community dominance here, we're talking about, okay, around five miles of where Raleigh Dental Arts is located today. How many school principals know you by name, Tarun? Well, it's been, a, it's been a long time since I've been in school, so I hope I don't get sent to the principal's office. <laughs> <laughs> no, so, no, what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, 
your practice needs to be known throughout your mark in your market in the community yes yeah. that goes with community. personal branding as well i think a little bit like those photos and everything you said with that yeah 100 percent. so that's the market dominance piece and that f that finishes up the flywheel that's so, awesome so how long does it take to get somebody going through this flywheel and and making it effective and all of this because i mean it's it sounds relatively simple it's you know not super complicated uh but it sounds like it's it's a decent amount of work it is it is it is a decent amount of work every anything good that's what it's salt takes work to put it but every practice is at a, is at a, is at a different stage of its growth right so you are going to find that different practices are going to need different momentum drivers to get started. A practice that would say, you know what, my practice culture is at a, at a minus three on a scale of one to 10. That practice would, would immediately uh, get in touch with uh, my friends at the Crown Council and get them to help the practice build its practice culture you're going to find that another practice will say oh, we have a really, really outdated website. That's where they are going to start. So the thing, the most important thing is to get started and to have what you're doing. You look at the entire flywheel and you say, okay, this is what's needed. I'm going to start here, then go here, then go here, then go here, and then go here, and go on building as you go. But the it most important thing is it important to go in order or can you like kind of skip around? It, it, because if, if it's a brand new practice, if it's a brand new practice, uh, like sc scratch practice, that's opening its day tomorrow. I'm advising them to go in order to go in order. And, and you don't, you don't have to finish and you can't even finish building an awesome practice culture. You just need to have the foundation in place and then you start building on your patient experience and then you start building um, on your on your reputation. All that can, the first three components can be done. You can start that within 30 days. Okay. Yeah, Ab absolutely. Well, I thought it was really good. I went ahead and bought the book while you were talking. So <laughs> I look forward to reading it. On Amazon? I went ahead and bought the book. So on I your, look forward to your website. Yes. Okay, 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 great, okay. So I look forward to reading that. And yeah. I, I hope other people join me. Well, Farai, how can people get in touch with you? My website, www.dentistryflywheels.com. Flywheels with a plural? Yes, with, a, yeah, with, a, with an S, yes. Okay. Farai at dentistryflywheels.com. <clears throat> and are you on Instagram? I am on Instagram, flywheels, flywheels Farai. LinkedIn cool. would be the best. LinkedIn would be the, the, the very best because I'm actually doing something on LinkedIn. Uh, you have been following the 75 days of momentum on LinkedIn, Tarun? I've been, yes, I've been seeing them. Not every day, but I've been seeing them okay. uh, at, whenever I do log into LinkedIn. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I've been posting a video every day for, for 30 days. For, I'll be posting for 75 days. Oh, cool. I th I th by the way, I think that's a great challenge that more people should do. They should commit themselves to doing something every day, every no day. matter how good or bad it is. Because some of your videos are very good. Some of the videos, you know, aren't as good, uh, you know, but you're, you're committing to that, uh, that commitment of making that video every single day. And you never know which one is going to be the one that, you know, gets you going and gets a, and gets a reaction. From, a lot of engagement. From your potential <laughs> patients. 100%. I totally agree. I totally agree. Well, for I, I want to th go ahead. So you, uh, one of the questions here, yeah, that uh, Michelle sent me was, uh, "What do practices need help the most?" Uh, yeah. If you don't mind me answering, that question I would love quickly. that. Okay, so um, practices need help figuring out their underlying flywheels. Okay, every practice has a flywheel. Um, your practice today is a flywheel. What you just need to do is to figure out the individual elements of that flywheel and then arrange them in a sequential sequence so that everything benefits from everything else. You get that cumulative 
compounding effect of everything you are doing. Your SEO feeds into your marketing funnels, your marketing funnels feeds into your case acceptance, going all around. So that point of having you figure out what elements constitute your flywheel, that is the one thing that a lot of data practices um, need help with. And those practices that will take hold of the flywheel framework, the way Amazon did in 2001, I can tell you those practices will become the go-to practice in their cities, 100%. Yeah, I, I don't disagree with you. I think, uh, I think you know, what happens to a lot of dentists is that they get focused on a quick scheme or something to work very fast, and, and it takes time. All of these things are um, uh, incremental. They build on each other, and uh, you can't stop. You can't, you can't focus on Google reviews for one month and then stop and then come back to it. It's got to become part of your everyday habits and same with social media, whether it's before and after pictures or simple videos about, you know, different things in your practice, uh, different procedures or products or technologies, just the explanation video. It, it's so important to, to maintain that uh, to help build your dental practice. No, I, I absolutely agree. And it all comes down to one of the... The, one of the main mistakes that I see um, a lot of practice leaders focusing on tactics as opposed to focusing on strategy. Oh, what can I do for my SEO? What can I do for my Google ads? What can I do for my Facebook ads without having first of all figured out what strategy they have? So the dentistry flywheel framework is the strategy you need. Once we have that strategy in place, we'll now figure out all these tactical maneuvers or these tactical moves to ensure that they are all working in sync with each other to give you the kind of uh, boost uh, to grow your practice. Well, Fry, I want to thank you for coming on and sharing the dentistry flywheel with everybody. Yes, that's and awesome. That's, uh, I think there's a lot of great information there. And if people want to, they can uh, reach out to get your nine-star patient experience book either on Amazon or via your website. Uh, and then of course, reach out to you on LinkedIn if they have additional questions. 100%, no, I thank you very much. I'm truly appreciative of this opportunity, guys. Thank, thank you, you. we'll see you soon. Okay, everybody have a great week and we look forward to seeing you on next week's episode of the T-Bone Speaks podcast. Take care. Thanks so much for listening to T-Bone Speaks with Dr. Tarun Agarwal. Remember to keep striving for excellence and we'll catch you on the next episode.